Last year, you probably heard of the underdog stories like Raoul Batiste winning the Copa del Rey or Nantes winning the Coupe de France. But what if I told you last year there was an even bigger underdog story? Hey guys, so before the video starts, I gotta tell y'all something. Your boy just recently featured on the official J League International channel. I did a voiceover promo for the upcoming Fujifilm Super Cup between Yokohama F Marinos and the club we'll be talking about today, Vafre Kofu. It was an honor to work with the Japanese League on this video, so please go check it out and subscribe to the J League International channel. Also, be sure to tune into the Fujifilm Super Cup, which will be globally broadcasted everywhere besides Japan live on the J League's international channel. Time zones are confusing, so here's a guide on when the spectacle will be on for you. You can pause the video and take a look. For everyone besides the US and Mexico, the game will be this Saturday on February 11th. For the US and Mexico, it'll be Friday on February 10th, late at night. The name Van Foray comes from a compound of two French root words, Van meaning winds and Foray meaning forest. Putting these two root words together creates the famous phrase Furin Kazan, which is a phrase quoted from Sun Tzu's Art of War. Its meaning is made up of four similes, as swift as wind, as gentle as forest, as fierce as fire, as unshakable as mountain. The phrase was popularized by Kofu based feudal Lord Takeda Shingen as a banner during war, and for those into Street Fighter, you might recognize the Furin Kazan characters on Ryo's belt or reused stage in Street Fighter 2. The club is based in Kofu, the capital city of Yamanashi Prefecture in north-central Japan. The city is just 36 kilometers southeast of Mount Fuji, making Kofu infamous for its breathtaking views of Japan's tallest mountain. Kofu is very much still strongly linked to feudal Japan as seen through its castles and even festivals. The biggest festival in Kofu is the Shingen Komatsuri, which celebrates the life of the aforementioned Takeda Shingen. It is the largest public history play in Japan, and the festival was also included in the Guinness world records in 2012 for the largest gathering of samurai in the world with 1,061 participants. Notable people from Kofu include Naoko Takauchi, the creator of Sailor Moon, and Japanese football's most iconic player, Hidetoshi Nakata. The midfielder predominantly played in Serie A where he became a cult hero. And then later on, after his early retirement, he decided to sell sake-flavored Kit Kats. And I tried one. I have a pretty weak stomach, and this did irreversible damage to it. That being said, I'm sure it's not that way for everyone, it's just that... Just put the card up. Vanfrey Kofu was founded as Kofu Club in 1965. Kofu started as a high school club, but quickly started recruiting graduates of other high schools with the intention of promoting to the Japan Soccer League. This was unlike most clubs during this time, where players were actually employees of sponsoring companies. In 1972, Kofu joined the newly formed JSL Division 2. The club stayed there until 1992, when it became a founding member of the second division of Japanese football, the JFL. However, the JFL dissolved after just six years. As a result, Kofu would then join the newly formed J League Division 2, or now known as J2 League. The club would also change its name to the current one we see today. Vafare Kofu's start to life in the new second division was absolutely miserable. They were dubbed the excess baggage of J2 due to three straight last place finishes. Even worse though, Kofu was spiraling into financial turmoil with the club lacking in sponsors and sales. This was due to a management team that had no prior experience in management or even sales. And if you thought that was bad, the president at the time was Takeo Fukushima. A former high school teacher who had no prior experience nor knowledge in management or sales. Add on top of the fact that this was during the 1997 Asian financial crisis, and you have a club struggling to survive. 2000, though, was the worst year as the club was trying to do everything to make sure it could survive. That included reducing spending more than the previous years, and releasing a large number of players and replacing them with six amateurs. As a result of Kofu's significant drop in quality, the team lost 19 straight league matches and went 26 without a win. Kofu would finish bottom that season and see an average attendance of just 1,850 out of a possible 17,000. In response to the crisis, Yamanichi YBS Group, Kofu's largest shareholder, held discussions and requested help from the city. However, the local government rejected those requests. Kofu's largest supporters group, Hinchas, did everything in their power to keep the club afloat, including fundraisers around Kofu Station, and more importantly, negotiations with the prefecture and city for financial support. Eventually, after after collecting 27,000 signatures, the local government gave in and agreed to support the club on some conditions. So in order for the club to survive after 2002, it would need an average attendance of more than 3,000. It would also need to see more than 5,000 club supporters. And finally, there would need to be an increase in sponsor income by 50 million yen or more. And if these weren't achieved, Vanfare Kofu would be dissolved. With these conditions, the 2001 season for Kofu would put them under even more pressure than the years before. However, the club as a whole responded 
aligned well with YBS Group's Kazuyuki Uno taking over management. He was more than qualified for the job and achieved the required amount of sponsor income needed. From there, club supporters and attendance gradually increased, and the other two goals were achieved. However, there was still a 40 million yen deficit looming over the club. But thanks to contributions of the local government and other companies, the deficit was reduced. The club finished dead last for a third straight time, but that wouldn't really matter because in October of 2001, it would be determined that Vafre Kofu would survive beyond 2002. 2002 would see Kofu bring in Takashi Oki as manager. He would bring in midfielders like Ken Fujita, Kazuki Kuranuki, Katsuya Ishihara, and Yun Mizukoshi. Oki would then help improve the defense with Brazilian Alaire. From there, Vafre Kofu would gradually improve their results with every passing season. Then in 2005, the club finished third, meaning they had the chance to promote to the first division through a promotion relegation series. Kofu would win 2-1 in the first leg against Kashiwa Reisol. Then the second leg, Brazilian forward Bade would single-handedly banish the Sun Kings with a double hat-trick. And thus, Vafre Kofu was promoted to J1 League for the first time in their history. It was an incredible feat, considering the club was struggling to exist just five years prior. Thanks to their promotion, Kofu would see a significant increase in attendance and also sponsor income. As a result, their excess debt was resolved and there was officially no longer a management crisis at the club. Vafare barely survived their first season in J1 and then relegated in 2007. The club spent the next three years in J2 and then promoted back to J1 in 2010 thanks to the prolific goal scoring of Mike Havanar. However, despite Havanar scoring the second most goals in the 2011 J1 season, Kofu fell right back down. Havanar soon after left for a greater challenge at Chelsea Industry Plant Vitesse. Kofu were phased though as they won the 2012 J2 title thanks to a 24 game unbeaten run. Vanfare throughout the next four years would then hang around J1 in the lower mid table. However, in 2017, the club would fall back down to J2 and they've been there ever since. Now, let's fast forward to 2022. Like every country in the world, Japan has their own domestic cup competition. It includes all teams from J1 and J2 league, and the winners in each of Japan's 47 prefectural championships, which consist of either J3 league teams or even college teams. The furthest Kofu has gone in the Emperor's Cup is the quarterfinal, four times. Major Akira Ito left before the beginning of the 2022 campaign after nearly leading Kofu back to J1. This opened the door for former Singapore national team coach Tatsuma Yoshida to take charge. Kofu started their cup campaign in the second round, where Yoshida's men would take down the Okayama Prefectural Champions International Pacific University 5-1. The third round saw Kofu play J1 side Hokkaido Consadole Sapro at home, and in just 11 minutes, a disastrous own goal from Yuzuki Yamato gave Sapro the advantage. 20 minutes later though, it appeared the Sapro defenders thought it was the snow festival already, the way they were defending, and Kofu equalized. Then 39 minutes played, Kazushi Mitsuhira scores his second of the day, and Sapro are stunned. But this wasn't over just yet. Kofu later in the second half gave up a penalty, but fortunately for Fanfare, the attempt was wide. And thus, Kofu shocked Sapro and move on to the round of 16. That wasn't the only shock in the round, however. Reigning J-League champions Kawasaki Frontale fell short to Tokyo Verdi in J2. J2 also saw one of their own in V Vera Nagasaki defeat FC Tokyo. Current league leaders at the time also, Yokohama F Marinos weren't immune either, as was the biggest shock of them all, the reigning Emperor's Cup champions Urura Reds. J1 Saga on Tosu in the round of 16 was up next, but they were no match for Bruno Paraiba, who scored two early goals to help Kofu advance to the quarterfinals for a fifth time in their history. One month later, Vafare Kofu would travel to Best Denki Stadium to play Avispa Fukuoka in the quarterfinal. And enter Kazushi Mitsuhira again, who scores early on for Kofu and, uh... Yeah, he, he looks a little bit different now. You see, back in July before the round of 16 match, Mitsuhira gained a lot of media attention for his brand new hairstyle. From what I've read, initially the stylist was to give him a loose perm, you know, not anything too crazy, but instead she aimed for an afro. And with no place to turn back, she then said to Mitsuhira, you only live once, so why don't you try it at least once? Fukuoka would respond 11 minutes later through a Kamiya Moriyama missile, which troubles the keeper. Then after a standstill that would lead us into extra time, Yoshiki Torikai, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, gets knocked down but gets right back up and scores in the 97th minute. Kofu hold on and win 2-1 to advance to the semi-finals of the Emperor's Cup for the first time ever. The semis would see Kofu play against their toughest opponents yet, Kashima Antlers. Kashima Kashima and J1 had not finished below top 5 since 2012, but the newly dubbed Giant Killers of Japan didn't let any of that phase them. 37 minutes played, Yuma Miyazaki catches the deer asleep, receives a perfect pass from Ikuma Sakigawa, and scores calmly. Kofu held on to the lead for dear life throughout the next 60 minutes and went on to win 1-0 and advanced to the final of the Emperor's Cup. This was such an incredible feat considering Kofu are in J2 and had actually just finished the season in 18th. 
Smith. And so it all came down to just one more match. Could Vafre Kofu make history and become just the fourth J2 team to ever win the Emperor's Cup? Or would J1 representative Sanfrecce Hiroshima spoil the party and win their first Emperor's Cup since 1969? Kofu went out guns blazing to start the game and their efforts were rewarded after 16 minutes when Afro man Mitsuhira would continue his fantastic goal scoring form. From there, Kofu with the help of their keeper Kohei Kawata would do everything in their power to hold off Sanfrecce's attack. However, Hiroshima finally found the breakthrough in the 84th minute through a rippling strike from Takumu Kawamura. Then in extra time, Kofu's dreams started to dwindle as Hideomi Yamamoto gives away a penalty. Makoto Mitsuta steps up to end the giant killers, but Kohei Kawata makes a huge stop. Nothing would happen throughout the remainder of extra time, which meant both teams' fates would be determined by a penalty shootout. Hiroshima are first, and Piero Sotiro scores. Brazilian Lira next, and he converts for Kofu. Then both Taishi Matsumoto and Jutulio score, as do Nassim Ben Khalifa and Nagi Matsumoto. Now Sanfrecce's goal scorer, Kawamura, but again Kohei Kawata comes up with the heroics. Toshiki Ishikawa takes full advantage of the opportunity, and now Kofu are just one penalty from achieving the impossible. Their hopes lay upon a man who made the mistake that nearly costed his team earlier, but having erased that from his memory, the captain sent it into the top left corner effortlessly. Just a little over 20 years ago, this club was lost, endangered, near extinction. Now they stand proudly, having achieved something so unbelievable through the adversity that once saved their club all those years back. Vafare Kofu, for the first time in their history, are Emperor's Cup champions. It appears that I always have to do at least one J-League video around the beginning of the year. I want to do more, but you know, at least we've knocked down that. It should be mentioned, by the way, that with winning the Emperor's Cup, Kofu have actually earned a spot in the Asian Champions League next year. And if you want to talk about something that might be a little more closer to now, there's the Super Cup between Kofu, who are the cup winners, and Yokohama F Marinos, the J1 League title holders. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little story, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Janos Balash, El Fabi, Milioe 9 Aldipu, Alex Ross, Ulta, Min Suomez, Araisan, Carlos Anaya, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Juan Leras, Miguel Munoz, Wien Dean Mintang, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Saw, Subscribe to Tendetem, The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Trevor Batson, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Chris Damaseno, David Dunn, Declan Malloy, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joe Paricio, Jordan Clavett, MX Weeb, Niche, Patrick Barley, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you like, follow my Instagram if you want, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there, and if of course, you can follow my semi-active Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.